Hey everybody, welcome back to Tall Garage, I'm your host Ken. Today we are talking about the exhaust manifold for the Ford 300 LS engine that we're putting together on this channel. We're going to show you how I am going to mount a turbo on this engine with the LS head and how you can do it too. I gotta give a big shout out to Holly for hooking me up with these hooker headers that I cut off and welded together. But you can do it at home too with stock LS manifolds, which at the end of the day might be easier. So let me ask you guys, what have you got done over the winter? We've finally got a bunch of nice days ahead of us, and I'm finally back in the garage getting stuff done. A little bit of a hiatus does everybody good, you know, you gotta have a break, all work, no play, and whatnot. So hope you enjoy the video. And here we go. Alright, cool. I'll stop back like I'm doing coke back here in the yeah, background. Alright. So, um right. This is gonna be a quick video. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Um so I want to talk about these. Uh, the great folks at Motor Trend uh, talked Holly in sending these over, I think, or Summit. I forget. Whoever it is, they're great, right? So they sent over these brand new uh, Hooker LS manifold for the Ford 300 here. And we're not going turbo right away, but that doesn't mean we can't build a turbo manifold for the 300. So I'm going to figure out to show you guys how I'm going to do it. Now you don't have to use these, but I figured they were going to weld up a little bit easier because they're brand new and they haven't been ran. So that should make my life a little bit easier. I was going to use stock ones, which we had already kind of started on. So here's the stacker and we made it straight and we have to whack this tube off. But this was like the start of it, but oh, uh, yeah, this is right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, but anyway, so we're not going to use this though. <clears throat> we're going to use these. So the plan is, is uh, we're going to whack this tube off and we're going to put a nice big fat turbo flange on them after we weld them together. So uh, we'll show you more when we get a little bit further along in that. I just wanted to make a video because I just, you seen, I just opened them for the first time. So I figured I better get that on camera, right? Alright, so stay tuned for more from us here at Tall Garage. Well, what do you think? Well, I think uh, I need to cut right here at this line and a little bit back on this line. I think, God damn, this is going to be fucking perfect. Come here, get a little kitty gander. Mm. So I think we cut this one like right here. Yeah. And we cut this one right on the line. And if you look back here, I think that's going to be almost perfect. Maybe, oh, there we go. Let's say that again. I think if we uh, cut right about here mm -hmm. and cut this one right on the line, mm -hmm. I think by this bolt hole, it's going to be about perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you got... yeah, if we put the flange on the bottom, we won't have to fucking fill that in. Yeah. 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 yeah if you hang it like right here, like a I think 45. That's what I want to do. I want to hang really it off good. the bottom now. You want to grab me a sharpie so I can mark this? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna have to get the grinder and cut a little off that up top right there. So we can actually butt it up where it needs to be. Oh yeah. Yeah. A little long. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that off real quick. Okay. Mm. Well I like I like the idea that there's gonna be like just two half bolt holes there. Uh-huh. Because then I don't gotta worry about like the heat causing them to flex. Mm-hmm. And like not and you know what I'm saying? Cause like apparently that can happen. So uh, all these bolt holes are pretty big too. Yeah. Now cut some real quick. Now you go do that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are about ready to start welding on this thing. Uh, we got her torqued on here. So I don't want it to move much when I'm welding. I'm not a huge fan of how different the passenger and driver's side were because this side juts out a lot further than the other side did. So it's kind of going to be 
an odd little bump here. We took this slice out and I'm kind of using it to help uh, contour this. So I'll weld on this side, I'll weld on this side and I can blend it all together with a grinding wheel. Hopefully it looks okay when we're all done. Uh, the bottom side, there's this big lip here, but I figured this is where we're going to put the flange. So all this will get cut out anyway for the flange, uh, for the turbo. So I suppose I can set up the camera and I'll get a couple shots of me zapping on her. And yeah, pretty soon we will have a double hooker turbo manifold for the LS headed 300. So let me get right on that and make some more progress, fellas. Looks like it's welding okay. I'm not sure what these are made out of. I'm hoping they're uh, cast steel, but can't really be 100% sure. But I hear it tinging. So, so I don't know. If this doesn't work, uh, we'll switch over stock ones. Like if these have a tendency to crack, I'm hoping they don't. But if they do have, if they do start cracking out on us, um, the welds, we'll switch over to stock one. Stock one's weld really good. Uh, that's what I have on the Ranger. Is uh, stock one's welded up, and you know I got a couple thousand miles on the Ranger, no cracks yet. So we'll see. These, these could just be temporary, but they're gonna look hella good for now. That's for sure. Alright, so we got it off after tacking the front. I wanted to put some heat into the back of this because we are going to be laying down some beads and not just tacks. So a lot more heat. I don't want I want to shock this stuff as little as possible. But I figured a little preheat in the back here wouldn't be a bad idea. And then while it's still hot, we're gonna throw it back on and get it torqued up. And I believe the plan is to heat up the front after that, put some more heat into it, and then weld up the front. And then after that, we're just waiting on the flange to show up so we can weld the flange on. So, wish me luck. We are back uh, months later, matter of fact, but uh, we got this flange that we need to weld on here for the turbo. 
So I have it marked out where I need to cut this out. Um, we're going to do a little trimming and a little fitment, and then we're going to burn this in just like we burned these together. Hopefully it goes well, uh, and we will see. But we already had the turbo set up on the manifold to kind of get an idea of where it's going to be. I was supposed to get this bracket that went right here, um, but the guy that said he was going to send it to me never came through. So that's a bummer. I hope he's doing all right. I haven't heard from him. But I, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get this cut, and I'll, I'll turn you back on a little bit further. All right. So while Kyle is out here working on his fuel pumps, I'm cutting and blowing a bunch of metal dust in them. We got this trimmed up to where I think I want it. And the flange is fitting in here pretty nice. We're going to obviously have to do some cleanup on the inside. But we're going to weld her on just about that, like that. I'm going to go back in and do one more test fit to make sure the turbo is going to be in the orientation I want it. But I think this is going to work. And overall, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking so far. So I'll turn you guys back on when I have a little bit more done. All right, everybody. So we got the flange welded on. Just quick, simple, burn it in all the way around, right? We, um, we preheated it pretty well with the torch, got cherry hot. I don't think that was necessary. I think this is cast steel or an alloy. Um, and it welded really good. So while it may not weld as great as the LS stuff, because the LS uh, stock manifolds weld really good. This one welds fine. Now we still have some cleanup to do on the inside. I gotta get in there and hog all that out. But all in all, the manifold is done. So I'm gonna throw it on here and we'll take a look at it with the turbo. And now, like I said, for now we're gonna get her bolted on. Uh, we'll throw the turbo on, take a look at it, see what it looks like. And uh, we'll wrap this one up. So thanks for following around with me guys. And um, uh, in the making of the double hooker manifold, so. <laughs> Alright guys, so there we go, that's kind of the finished product, right? That's essentially where the turbo is going to hang. Uh, I could have tucked it up a little closer to the block, but we do have some engine mounts and need a bolt there and whatnot, so. I feel like this is pretty good, right? And obviously we can, we can uh, rotate this part around to get the outlet where we need it. Like I was saying earlier, it might not be perfect because like stock, see I got this going the right way. Stock, this bracket is supposed to be right here. Um, and that is where the alternator is going to go, which is also where our inlet is going to be. But it's not that big of a deal. We can uh, always just put a small stubby filter on it like I did on the Ranger. I think I might have done a video on that, I don't remember. But yeah, so... The only real consideration to make in the future is if all this is going to clear in the Mustang. Um, it's not much wider than a V8, so I think, you know, we should be well. It's a pretty compact package. Like, if they can fit coyotes in them, right, we can fit this in it. So, um, if we have to in the future, we can just make another one of these out of some LS stuff. I already have some ideas on how I'd do it different next time. So, there's that. But other than that, I'm real happy with the way it turned out. I don't have too much more to say on it. Like I said, we still got a little bit more work to do on the inside, cleaning it up, and we might do a little bit more welding on the inside as well. But I'm very happy with the progress I've made here. And again, I gotta give a big shout out to Red Holly and uh, Holly and Hot Rod and all them guys for getting me these to cut up and, and weld together. So that was really awesome of them. But we'll wrap this up and we'll get back to work. All right, fellas, this concludes another video. Hope this was helpful. And as always, I appreciate everybody that likes, comments, subscribes, tells me what I'm doing wrong, tells me how they would do it better, asks me why I'm not using Ford 302 heads, so or boss heads, whatever you want to call them. Uh, check out that video that I did, by the way, on which heads you should use for your own Ford 300. But we're getting really close to wrapping this up. All of the big pieces are really coming together. It's just a lot of little stuff we got to do now. The wiring harness 
Uh, I'll have to do a video about that to show you guys where I decided on how to wire this thing up. But that'll be coming real soon. We also are going to have a video on the run stand. We're going to throw it together real quick for this engine so we have something to actually get it running on because I can't get it running on the engine stand as it sits. We're going to be pulling the stuff off the uh, Mustang 302 to put on the back of this to see if it all fits, which I'm told it will. Flywheel, starter, bell housing should all go right in the back of this and we should be able to get it spinning over that way. So, like I said, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. And as I have said before, I appreciate all of you guys. You're great. And I'll see you in the next one. So.